From the InfoWars.com studios in Austin, Texas, it's the real news with your host, David Knight. All right, joining us now, we do have him on the line now, is Shiva Ayadure, who has gone independent as a candidate for Senate in Massachusetts. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Ayadure. Great to be here, David. How are you? Doing good. I think I've got an idea as to why you want to go independent, <laughs> but uh, tell us in your own words uh, why you have uh, now declared that you're an independent instead of a Republican in the race uh, for Senate in Massachusetts, U.S. Senate. Well, I think the fundamental reason, David, is both of these parties are rigged systems. Uh, everyone knows that. And if you look at what President Trump's doing, he's not only trying to get his policies passed, but he's ha having to fight the swamp in uh, D.C. But one of the interesting things is Massachusetts is many ways a sewer that feeds the swamp in, in D.C. All the quote unquote elite intellectuals come out of here. And what we've noticed is, you know, we've been running an amazing campaign. We were the first to announce on the Republican Party. We've been eviscerating the establishment of Republicans and also Elizabeth Warren, the fake Indian. And we've been building such a movement, but the reality is the establishment Republican mass GOP. And I want to distinguish the mass GOP from the broad base of Republicans, because the mass GOP does not want a guy like me even on the ballot. And uh, four years ago, they did the same thing to a very good conservative engineer by the name of Mark Fisher. They made sure that he was ousted out of the state convention and never even got on the ballot. He sued and actually won against the mass GOP. Now, since then, the swamp creatures have actually gotten a lot more better at doing this. So they don't want independence. They don't want people to essentially build a broad-based movement against Senator Warren, because in many ways, David, they're in collusion with her. They're going to throw a softball. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. She's going to throw a softball to them. And the reality is, you know, uh, there's a video that we put out. You know, we as a people need to declare our independence because the founders of this country never wanted political parties. They're basically... Uh, monopolistic corporations who survive for their own interests. And it has nothing to do with the people. So I don't want to basically, we dump the Republican Party because I don't want them to ride on my coattails. Because until I got into this race, David, they were essentially assuming that Elizabeth Warren was winning. And I'm the one who made the race quite interesting for them. So we don't really want to give all of our power to them when they have no interest in essentially supporting our candidacy uh, in any way. Yeah, you know what they do, as you're pointing out, they don't really have any fundamental disagreement with Elizabeth Warren on the important issues. They're going to pick some wedge issues and try to make a distinction on those. Abortion is one of them that I just talked about. So the Republicans will talk about abortion, but they won't really do anything about it because they want that issue to continue to remain. When it comes to the issues of warfare and welfare and the surveillance state and the Patriot Act, there is no difference on those issues. Stay with us, we're gonna be right back. Let me be very clear. What we're doing today is we are dumping the Republican Party, okay? We are dumping the Republican Party. You can raise those up. They, we, the Republican Party, the Republican Party doesn't deserve you, and we're dumping them, and we're going independent today. I gave them a shot, you know? I did. I gave you guys a great shot if you're listening out there, Charlie Baker, Mass GOP. We're not dumping the Republican people or the Democrat, there's a lot of nice people who've been bamboozled by these people Absolutely. on both parties. Yes. We're gonna bring them together. We're gonna give them a home, right? And they deserve that. So let's go out there and declare our independence. Thank you. All right, that is Shiva Ayadure, Dr. Shiva Ayadure. And you can find him at shiva4senate.com. That's S-H-I-V-A, the number four, and senate.com. As you just heard there, he has declared his independence. He's been running for Senate in Massachusetts. He declared as a Republican candidate. But now he says he wants to be independent of the party system. And we've seen this playing out in the last week or so, haven't we? There is a civil war that is going on in the Republican Party right now. The proxy in that civil war is what's going on with Roy Moore in Alabama. You have to understand that even before any of these allegations, regardless of what you think of these allegations, we have serious reasons to question this. But 
regardless of what you think of these allegations, the Republican establishment had spent $30 million to defeat him in the primaries to keep their lobbyist candidate who had a lot of ethical issues, who was appointed by a governor who subsequently had to, sh uh, to, to resign. They spent $30 million to get this guy, uh, keep him from running. And they also spent money against other conservatives in Alabama, like Mo Brooks, who is now endorsing Roy Moore. They spent 150 times more, just with their Senate leadership fund, 150 times more against the conservatives in Alabama and a couple of other races than they have against Democrats who are running for Senate. That's what the GOP is doing. They do not want to have people who are going to stand for liberty, who are going to stand for small government. They do not represent the uh, desires of the vast number of uh, Republican voters out there. That's why it's so important when we look at the primaries. But you can see what happens even when you beat them at the primary. So we're talking to Dr. Shiva Ayadure. Tell us a little bit, uh, Dr. Ayadure, about what you're going to do there, because we know how rigged this system is. I worked with the Libertarian Party years ago because I didn't want to be part of these two establishment parties. It's so much harder, even as an independent, to get on the ballot in most places than it is uh, to get on as a third party. And they have really rigged the process to keep anyone other than their two parties in. We would have situations where, uh, in some jurisdictions, the Republican candidate wouldn't file. And so it was going to be a two-way race between a libertarian and a Democrat. And so the Republicans would go in after the filing date. They would go into the judge and say, can you set aside that election requirement there? And the judge would say, yeah, sure, we have a requirement. Uh, we want to make sure that we the people have a choice. So we'll put you on the ballot. We won't even hold you to the regulations that you failed to observe. Yeah, David, I think you're bringing up a really, really good point. I think you talked about centralization versus decentralization. Both of these parties want to centralize power. If there's a darkness, that's what it comes from. Nature teaches us everything is decentralized. You just have to look at how nature's organized. And what's fascinating about Massachusetts is I think we have an incredible opportunity here to smash that notion because, you know, the revolution in the first shots were fired in Massachusetts. And if you think about it, Harvard University single handedly is in many ways the epicenter of the uh, sewer that feeds that swamp I keep talking about. Think about yeah. Harvard University. It's, it's graduated Mitt Romney. Elizabeth Warren, uh, what, what taught there, she didn't graduate there, and Charlie Baker. And if you look and at- And Al this, Franken, Al Franken graduated from there. Al Franken got a degree in social relations. Uh, you've got four degrees. You got two, a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering, another one in computer science. Then he got a master's degree in mechanical engineering and uh, was a visual, visual studies. But I, uh, still, you know, it, it's like uh, he got a degree from Harvard in, in social relations. Uh, so we right. can kind of see the difference in resumes there. But go ahead. You're making a, a great right. point about how it is a center of corruption. And this we have seen this in the, the trials against uh, Aaron and Schwartz and others. Exactly. If you look at Harvard University, fundamentally, it's given rise to the swamp creatures who essentially think that they're actually contributing to human society. I'm not saying there's not some good people there, but fundamentally, it's a big contrast from the high tech workers that MIT generates. And if you look at the results in Massachusetts, just a, a, the facts, the, one of the biggest public integrity organizations rated Massachusetts, the worst in corruption, which means these politicians are really good uh, I mean, worst in public integrity, worst uh, bested corruption. It has the 47th worst uh, public infrastructure, subways, highways, et cetera, and three times the national average in opioid addiction. That's what Harvard has delivered. And on top of that, Harvard represents itself as a university. It's actually a fake university that's fundamentally running as a hedge fund, $45 billion hedge fund that does not pay a dollar in taxes. David, if you and I started a hedge fund, we'd at least be paying 20 to 25%. So one of the slogans that emerges out of this is in fairness. It's about fairness, and that fairness is let's tax Harvard. And, not, and there's a bunch of stuff that emerges when you break away from this two-party system. You know, half of the judges on the Supreme Court are Harvard graduates. And if you think about it, several years ago when people wanted term limits, they're the ones who overruled it. So these guys are part of this entire uh, uh, infrastructure which wants to maintain power over two, two parties. So one of the slogans that we put out there is term limits now and also one dollar one vote. What that means is in Massachusetts 4.3 million registered voters. That means if you're running for federal office you should not spend more than one dollar per vote which means 4.3 million dollars. Elizabeth Warren spent close to 100 million last year. You know the Republicans wow. spent close to 100 million. 
So why do you need so much money? Because you don't have a message. You're not really resonating with the masses. So you have to pummel them with massive TV advertising. The other thing we've talked about is let's really end student loans. What we mean by that is there's not an open market when it comes to student loans. If you and I started a business, David, and we try to get a business loan, the local business would say, hey, David, show me your business plan, Shiva. Let's look at it. Let's look at your projections. And then they'd make a, a decision based on actual due diligence. When they give student loans today, they're not asking that student, hey, what kind of study are you taking? Or are you taking the philosophy of uh, armadillos? Well, that's really not going to get you a job. And yet they give predatory loans to these students. The parents think they need to get these loans. So you have a $1.3 trillion in outstanding student loans. And you know what? None of them are going to be able to pay it. And we're going to, again, bail out these banks who are making record profits. So my view is it's not about taking away responsibility, but let's equalize the market because Bush uh, passed a law that students cannot default. But the reality is I, as a, a bank, as a business in an open market, should make oh, you know, very clear decisions. Right now, they're just giving away loans like they used to write the housing loans. And we're, right. we're on the verge of a massive bubble there. The other big thing we also brought out is no to Monsanto, you know, no to GMOs. You know, we want real food. The Republicans or Democrats do not want to do that. So when we say declare your independence, we're saying the establishment is one. They profit from war and sickness and, frankly, addiction. You know, Mitt Romney made $750 million from aggregating methadone clinics and flipping it. So these guys essentially create swamp economies. And a guy like me, who's done the MIT thing, started companies, you know, I'm really represented with the people really want. And I think we're going to have a gangbuster time at this. And we have a huge opportunity not only to defeat Elizabeth Warren, but also to start a wave in this country. Hey, it's okay to go independent and you can win because it's about the message. And I think yeah. people are tired of the nonsense. And I think, you know, the, the day after we broke away, we're almost polling at around 28 to 30 percent. The other Republicans are 20, 28 to 30 percent. What's fascinating is the votes that we're getting, however, are going to be all the people who are pinching their nose and voting for Warren. And then we're going to get a lot of the Trumpers. So this is going to be a fascinating election to watch. But we have to declare our independence, David, from both of these parties. What you're describing about uh, with the Roy Moore situation is, you know, these people are weaponizing sex. That's what That's they're right. fundamentally doing. And they can That's use right. it as they want, but let their guys get away when they want. Hang on. Uh, we're going to come right back to Dr. Shiva Ayodhure, who has declared his independence, telling you how important that is. And, you know, Mitt Romney is a perfect example of how there is no difference between the single party. We were going to get Obamacare or we were going to get Romney Care in 2012. They had it covered both ways. That was their central issue. I'm David Knight. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're talking to Dr. Shiva Ayadure. And, of course, I've, been, I've interviewed him in the past. He's the inventor of email. He's a polymath. He's a world-renowned systems scientist, inventor, entrepreneur. He's a chairman and CEO of a company called Cytosolve that models complex diseases. He's got multiple technical degrees from MIT. Very interesting uh, man. He's running for Senate in Massachusetts. You can follow him and follow his campaign. Donate to it at Shiva for Senate. That's S-H-I-V-A, the number four, Senate.com. Shiva for Senate.com. He was talking to us about the fact that he has now gone independent of the Republican Party. He's running in a race against Elizabeth Warren, Focahontas, <laughs> and uh, he has now uh, running as an independent. And so that is a very interesting move. He understands what a good old boy network it is. And we can see this. We can see how Mitch McConnell is going to try to shut down conservatives across the country. The Senate leadership campaign is not about that. It's about uh, it's not about getting Republicans in Senate. It's about preserving Mitch McConnell's leadership of the Republican Senate. And they don't even care if the Republicans have the majority in the Senate as long as Mitch McConnell is the leader of the Republicans, in my opinion. We can see this from the various races going on across the country, not just in Alabama. And uh, Dr. Ayadure, as you were talking about the interconnected network in Boston, uh, it was just a couple of weeks ago that I talked to the wife of Dana Gottesfeld, who is in prison right now, waiting trial, because he was trying to stop what many people have alleged, not just in uh, the case that he was involved in, but in other cases of medical kidnapping at Boston Children's Hospital uh, that is there with Harvard. And um, when they came to trial, what they saw, there was a very interconnected web of influence there. They saw a conflict of interest in the judiciary. So it is a very 
uh, corrupt system there in Massachusetts. But tell us about your running for independent there. Was there one specific incident or was it just that as you worked with the GOP, you realized that it was a network of good old boys and you were not uh, part of that? Well, David, I think it was a series of incidents, you know, where you add them up and you realize that this is a setup. One of the incidents was that we learned that in 2014, there was a, a, a conservative guy by the name of Mark Fisher who ran uh, as a, 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 on the GOP uh, to go against Charlie Baker, who is now the governor. In 2014, he goes to the state convention. In order to get on the ballot, not only do you have to get 10,000 signatures, but you also have to get 15% of the delegates who attend a convention to, to vote for you, to get on the ballot. And that convention typically occurs in April. So there'll be one in April 2018. Well, this guy Fisher goes to the convention, we found out. He had 600 delegates pledged to him of the 2,000 who were attending the convention, which is 30%. And you know he, he didn't think this was gonna be an issue. Well, guess what happens, David? He goes to the convention and he mysteriously gets only 14.9%, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people say there was shredding of ballots taking place. They do everything in pencil. So that's one incident. The other incident that we saw, David, was we were going out to the Republican town committees, getting standing ovations, people supporting us, and the mass GOP didn't even bother contacting us. And we also started noticing that the liberal mainstream media, the Globe and the, and the Herald, which claims to be a little more non-liberal, would include pictures of the other three candidates and leave us out. So we started eviscerating <laughs> that. So you see what I'm saying? So there, that's yeah. what started the collusion. So I didn't want to be holding my hands in my pockets in April 2018 and saying, oh man, they screwed us, right? So, you right. know, I'm not a, we're not stupid, right? So right. we decided we're not gonna play their game and why give them all of our publicity? Cause we're the ones bringing in some amazing voters on both the quote unquote left and right. The mm -hmm. other thing that you've talked about here, David, is, is this collusion. And you know, this is why we need to tax Harvard. And when we say that we need, here's an institution, which is a $45 billion hedge fund, and all of these career politicians and are in one way, one step removed from that institution, judges, politicians, yes. lawyers, all of them. And, you know, interesting enough, down the street, as I mentioned, Massachusetts was rated worse in infrastructure, great in corruption, worse in opioid addiction. But MIT has produced 33,000 businesses, David, two trillion in revenue per year get generated from those high tech workers down the street, the quote unquote nerds. Well, isn't it about time that a high tech blue collar worker like me represents a state which is essentially rated number one in innovation. So I think we have a huge opportunity or the other big thing, the reason that we went independent is we recognize that, you know, when you look at my policies, David, and what you or I and pretty much anyone listening, anyone who's a rational human being, it's not left, it's not right, it's not Democrat, it's not Republican, it's about fairness, right? That's mm -hmm. what we're all coming together about. It's not fair that we have open borders. We should have proper immigration. I mean, I would even argue that there's people who are on welfare, who do not work, have two or three wives or girlfriends, whatever, smoking, whatever they wanna do all day on all sorts of drugs. Those people do not contribute anything to our economy. I mean, what's really an American? An American is one who works hard. In fact, I would even argue there are probably some quote unquote illegal immigrants who actually work for a living. Maybe we should do a visa exchange program between those people who are actually working those who don't. So this yeah. really comes down to fairness, David. So we need strong borders, right? Anyone yeah. who's against that is not about fairness. We need to tax Harvard. We need to have term limits. We need to end the predatory pr practices of student loans. And we need to unleash innovation in Massachusetts, David, for every 17 skilled job openings. Get this, only one person is skilled. So wow. the mecca of this educational industrial complex, the career politicians and the academic elite have not produced enough people to uh, take on these skilled jobs. And this well, is I think it's going to be very important for you to run as an independent because as you're pointing out the way that they rigged this uh, this convention uh, in the last election, making sure that the non-establishment uh, candidate was not going to be there. They can do anything that they want. You talked about how they got uh, handwritten ballots and they got pencils and so forth. They are private clubs. That's what people need to understand about the Republicans and the Democrats. They are private clubs and they have upheld this over and over again. Hey, they get to make their own rules. They can do whatever they want. We can't interfere in that. And we can see it on the Democrat side with Hillary Clinton buying the Democrat Party. 
Uh, they, they were running into debt under the under Obama uh, candidacy, and uh, she comes in with tens of millions of dollars and buys them and says, now we're going to run this organization, and we're going to tell you what to do. And that's what happens in the Republican Party. People have now seen how Hillary Clinton did it, but they don't understand that this is going on in the Republican Party as well. It's going on nationally in the Republican Party with people like Mitch McConnell, and it is going on at every state level in the Republican Party. They're independent and there's not going to be, if they rig the situation and they rig it against Bernie Sanders, there's no no criminal charges that are going to be brought against them. It's not a crime. They're a private organization. They can do what they want. Yeah, and I think the bottom line is, David, what you said is the key. These are private clubs. Everyone yeah. needs to understand that. So what they do is they suck in people, everyday working people, to join one of these parties. They bond, they bound the discussion pro-abortion, anti-abortion, pro-transgender, non-transgender. They have like five issues, David, and they forget. And you've got a lot of issues you just mentioned that you're never going to hear them talk about, Republicans or Democrats. So they confine it to the same issues. That's one of the things that makes the presidential debates so boring. It's always a small, finite set of issues that you're allowed to talk about. Everything else is off the table, even things like the Patriot Act or Surveillance Act. That is off the table. They only talk about a select number of issues. Yeah, so they limit the discussion, and within that discussion, they give you, quote unquote, democracy to talk within that. But no one wants to talk about the apparent conflicts of interest that take place with institutions like Harvard. The MIT president just sent out a letter to all the alumni saying, isn't it horrible there's a bill in Congress, potentially we could be taxed for our endowment. Well, why aren't you taxed? Because you guys yeah. are running a private hedge fund. And the university is just a front end for it. So, in, in, so if you think about Elizabeth Warren, she works at a fake university, in many ways is supporting a fake Indian. And that's what's really going on. And I think this is, I'm excited. Uh, you saw the emotion in that room. People yes. are just pissed off and tired. And the really good thing, David, is people like Trump, people, the rebels are out there and they don't know what to do, even Donna Brazil, right? She did yes. come out because enough people, these people start pissing off that people say, forget it. Why should I, well, I can tell you that I've covered a lot of political events, and usually there's nobody there except the candidate, his immediate staff, and a couple of people from the press if they even bother to show up. You don't see, a for even a state Senate race, you don't see a crowd like the one that you had there, and you certainly don't see their enthusiasm. When people saw tens of thousands show up for President Trump, that was unbelievable as well. But at a Senate level, you just don't see the kind of excitement that you had there. Now, you've got to get on the ballot. What, we've only got about a minute left. Uh, is that going to be a very expensive, difficult no, no, process to get on the ballot? Or is it even easier to get on the ballot as an independent than to get through this bureaucracy in the party? Well, independent, we got to get 10,000 signatures. David. So we'll go get 20,000 just to be safe because, you know, they'll try to uh, likely screw us and try to throw away half of them. So mm -hmm. we're going to get 20,000 signatures. That's not a hard thing to do. We have ground team out there. We're using some amazing technology that I actually built, David, on our line. So when people give us money, we're not going to go waste it on consultants. Our goal is great. selection great. the right way as Americans. So Shiva for Senate is where people should go. Give us five bucks, 10 bucks. It's not, it's not about money, but it's about building a movement. That's what we're about, and that's what this country needs. We need to declare our independence from both of these parties. All right, we're out of time. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Shiva Ayadure. That is S-H-I-V-A, the number four, Senate.com. That is a great movement they've got going there. Take back your independence. We'll be right back. I'm David Knight.